and devotion from us when we say unto you that the ghost of Halloween is still with the world, that the recalcitrant energies released by them are still affecting humanity even today. We speak truly and we say unto you that if it were not for the grace of the angelic host and the power of light and grace to remove this horror from the world before it becomes a literal chamber of horrors for the world, I think that humanity might well pass from the scene for the sake of their escapades in darkness, in which, unfortunately, even the little children are participants, made so by their parents without understanding and without realization. Now I come to you today to commend many of you whose devotion is extraordinary. I come also to speak unto many of you to beware lest some man take your crown. For I tell you of a truth, the light of the law is with all still. It is the manifestation of our great reality. It is the sun of our hope, one and all. Therefore, let all understand it clearly and let the great continents of the air of the mind be opened and let men realize the light of their purpose, the light of our purpose, the light of the thundering purpose that comes from the farthest corners of the universe and is ever omnipresent with man, whether he realizes it or not. Light is light and darkness is darkness. And truly we can say that never shall they twain be united. But we can assure you that light banishes darkness, pushes it back, and becomes reality where no reality existed before. For this cause did we come into the world. For this cause did the Christ manifest long ago. For this cause does the beauty of hope 
expand itself for this cause do we express constantly to you far greater, far greater than you realize and in greater depth than you are able to realize at a given moment in time. Yet I am certain that our words, cherished as they are, and our vibratory action will become the beautiful ladder beneath your feet on which you can safely climb into those concepts of reality that are as blazing as the noontime. And I think also as I come to you this day of how I may enhance your loveliness, give you greater awareness, and banish your darkness. Truly, I would if I could banish it all. But the law permits me only certain responsibilities which I am wont to fulfill. Therefore, as I come to you today, you ought to know that I love you. And you should understand that the love that I bear is for the eternal radiance within you. Or you are in one way chalices of regeneration. And within there is the great coal from the altars of heaven. And as this chalice is cherished, as the coal is cherished and fanned into flame by the winds of the Holy Spirit, so the identity of man glows also, for he is no longer then a sleeping coal of transient identity, but he is a magnificent event happening in the world and the universe where God is and where he is also in the process of becoming more godlike. More God understanding then is given to his soul, and at last his mind is exalted and lifted up out of the banalities of ordinary existence into the strands of holy illumination, where he can bask in the sun of illumination with a sense of welcome in his heart. And in this sense, may I say unto you that the development of the sense of welcome in your heart is one of the greatest means whereby individuals can enhance the glow of God identity for themselves. Individuals who have a desire to push from them all the godlike qualities of the universe, all the great resurgence of God magnificence, quite naturally become ultimately bereft of it. For to him that hath shall more be given, and to him that hath not shall be taken away from him even that which he hath. Is this not then the law? Is this not then the acts of divine grace, giving unto all who are gathering more, greater measure of themselves, and to those who are not gathering, they lose what they have already gathered in those more relevant times when they were guided by a greater star and understood at last the radiance of heaven. But does not the greatest star of all guide you still? Have we changed stars in the middle of the stream? I do not think you have either changed stars or horses in reality, for you are being conveyed or carried across the great density of man's manifestation and field of manifestation into the glory of eternal God consciousness. Will you then bear with me as I say unto all that the darkness should go and the darkness should be burned by the light because it is not? And because the light is, and because you are light, and because without light you could not find the Christ of your being shining in that darkness which is all around you. It is a way which seemeth right unto a man, the end of which is death. Therefore I say unto all, awaken unto eternal life, awaken unto the great opportunity that is before you in the harmony of your being, as you begin to manifest the Christ victory of your life in all that you do for one another and for humanity, the great resurgence of the Christ power will manifest. And remember these words of the Christ, the light shone in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Will you then understand that the world does not comprehend the light because its ways are darkness and in the untowardness of its condition, it regurgitates darkness again and again, and the life opportunities vanish in a puff of the ominousness of life. Will you recognize with me then that this is the creation of man? Now we see the creation of God. He who cannot fail, fails only in the point of human will. And yet he fails not at all for the magnificence of human 
will, when properly harnessed to its God direction, as is a billowing sail in the universe that exalts the divine intent and floods the being of man with light and hope and expectancy. No shroud of mortal density this, but the great effulgence of the divine cup of cosmic grace. Will you recognize then that we have always loved you, that we have guided you over the mountains and the plain, over the valleys and the rivers? We have guided your destiny. And we are not just one in reality, for we are many. There are many of us beyond the veil who can step through the veil, who have the power to step through the veil. But then, dear hearts, in one way we are already here. We have stepped through the veil to manifest individually to you, and this also proves to you the reality of our existence. And this is not a fragile gift, one that vanishes in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, but a manifestation of hope that buoys men through the years until at last they are able to see with a clearer eye, with a clearer vision, not through the fog of mankind's density and the limited lenses of their present perception, but because of cosmic grace, they have at last frozen themselves into the great stream that moves. You understand what I'm speaking about? They have anchored themselves. They have frozen themselves. They have placed themselves there freely, willingly they have given themselves to God. And therefore the stream moves. It moves forward because the transcendence of God is with men. And the transcendence of God is for men. And the transcendence of the universe was created by God for men, for the manifestation of himself, a home of light and love, a home of beauty and power, a home of God-realization. And I say of all of it, it is worth it, in spite of human degradation, in spite of the cup that men have drunk of, which is as the plagues of revelation. And yet I tell you, as the plagues of revelation manifest in the physical form, so also the beauty of the cosmic graces of the new Jerusalem of the holy city will manifest likewise. And therefore men shall wear a new garment and they shall understand at last that that garment is the will of God. It is a vestment of cosmic truth. Its strands are woven by men day by day. The holy will of God, the will that buoys them up, the will that exalts in them the best gifts, that leads them as a father leads his children. I come to you then today, and I speak wisely and well. Heed you then the call that I have spoken, and let it not become as a thing lightly cast upon your ears. Let it also be a garment of loveliness, because it is truth. And let the truth of this garment sink down deeply into your hearts, that the reality of God's realization come at last, with its blessedness into the scope of your being, into the score of the melody of your being, to be rendered then day after day unto men. And now I say unto you, will you understand the great need to finish the work that has begun, to complete it? I say unto you, I speak of the book now, long a preparing for humanity. We of the cosmic level demand it of you, and it must be done soon. Will you recognize then with me that all of the opposing forces to this document shall be as a pinch of dust before our eyes, for we have secured a cosmic dispensation from the lords of karma to assist in the bringing forth to mankind of this great gospel of truth unto men, that their hearts may be filled, that their spirits may have new dimensions, that the great storehouse of life become a means whereby men can gather more of the glory of our ray. I have spoken, and it is done. I have spoken, and it is fulfilled. I have spoken, and it shall be.